Welcome to the conversation on the TYT network. Uh, I now am joined by a reporter so good that Elon Musk has called him Clip Einstein. Wow. Ken Klippenstein, formerly of the Iron Turks, now the nation's DC correspondent, joins us uh, to find out why Elon Musk paid him such a high compliment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I'm going to come back from that, being uh, compared <laughs> to one of the greatest. Uh, Physicist of, of uh, all time. Literally, the guy considered to be the smartest person that ever lived. Um, so, yes, Elon Musk did actually mean that as an insult. Why? We're still not sure. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's figure out uh, how you guys got into this fight in the first place. Let's be honest, you started it. Uh, so, Ken, <laughs> what did you do uh, to get under Elon Musk's skin? Well, Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, who, of course, uh, is said to have been the uh, Madame uh, for Jeffrey Epstein, who himself was uh, convicted of uh, trafficking underage girls and trying to, you know, bring them into a prostitution ring. Um, it, she, of course, was indicted by the FBI, arrested by the FBI, and um, you know, I had seen this picture of her uh, posing next to. Uh, Elon Musk, and you know, I thought that was newsworthy uh, and indicative, not just of you know Musk's relationship with her, but uh, or Musk's association with her. I should say we don't know the nature of their relationship, but uh, that same type of uh, association enjoyed by all sorts of different uh, billionaires, extremely powerful people, um, movers and shakers, uh, which you know I think at the very least says they're willing to tolerate people like that in their midst. So I tweeted it out and said, you know, it'd be interesting if people <laughs> sent this to Musk so we can try to get some kind of response from him because unsurprisingly, he has been pretty quiet on uh, the whole matter. And uh, it was amazing. So many people were sending it to him that you could just scroll through his replies. And it was just that photo after that photo again and again and again. And I guess uh, that got to him because uh, he, you know, this culminated in him responding to me as you just said, calling me Cliff Einstein. Um, and actually, it didn't take any offense to that. Uh, I took more offense to the meme he would send later, which was a very phoned in. Uh, it was the it was uh, Ralph Wiggum from The Simpsons, and it's the old joke. Oh, there it is now. He's saying uh, in, in the show in the in the cartoon show, he's saying uh, I'm a, I'm helping, but you know uh, they edited it to say I'm a journalist, and it's the worst Photoshop job I've ever seen. I expect better of a billionaire and someone who has the resources that he does. And not just that, he didn't even make the meme himself. He took this, he stole this from one of his supporter, from one of his loyal supporters who had sent that. So I was just offended by. Uh, that sort of lackluster. I expect better bullying from a uh, multi-billionaire like that, frankly. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, if you uh, can create SpaceX and Tesla, you should know your way around a meme. Um, so, uh, and and by the way, Gisley Maxwell uh, now being held in custody, uh, obviously uh, considering suicide as we speak, and the uh, guards are planning to take a break as we speak. And the video cameras are planning not to work as we speak. Uh, but that maybe is an investigative report for another day. Knock on wood, hope it doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, how back to Elon Musk. So do we know the context of that uh, picture that he took with Maxwell uh, at all? He claims it's a photo bomb. You know, I, I know what a photo bomb is, but I don't know what he means by that in that context. So he's saying she just kind of jumped up behind him and said, you know, here we are, take the take the picture. And I don't think that's plausible for a number of reasons. Now, of course, that's technically possible. You know, that could be what happened, but that wasn't the only association he had with Epstein World. So prior to this, uh, he and his now ex-wife had attended a uh, party held by the billionaire. He had attended um, another event along with several other billionaires of, of Epstein's. The New York Times, in addition to all of this, uh, recently reported that Epstein had told them when he was still alive. Uh, that he was advising Elon Musk's company. Now, you know, I should note Musk has Musk disputes this. He says that's not true, as you know, one would expect him to do. Uh, but these associations go far beyond just that one photo. It's very misleading to say. I think it's a straw man to say, oh, you're taking one photo and saying that you know um, this means that I have some uh, deep connection with them. I'm not saying the one photo is. I'm saying the photo is a sort of visual representation of uh, uh, this kind of overlap between these worlds. Not just on the part of Elon Musk, but on the part of high society generally, who very clearly was willing, at the very least, to tolerate these types of individuals in their midst. And I want to stress, all of these associations happened after uh, Epstein had been uh, uh, prosecuted for, uh, you know, trafficking minors. So he can't say, "Oh, I just, you know, uh, how was I supposed to know about this?" I find it very hard to believe that people in high society who, you know, gossip and talk and worry a lot about, um, 
you know, their public image in, in ways that uh, ordinary people, you know, don't or don't have to. Um, so I find that all hard to believe. And in addition to all that, his brother, um, it was reported by Business Insider, had been set up with a girlfriend by Jeffrey Epstein. So it's not just Epstein himself, it's associates, family members. Again, I'm not saying he's the same as Jeffrey Epstein. You know, I'm just saying that there clearly was associations that um, succeeded that came after uh, Epstein's uh, sentencing and you know widely reported uh, role in these terrible things that he did. And I thought it was newsworthy to talk about why why is this accepted and, and tolerated in the highest echelons of society. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. So first off, I, I want to say um, that. Because you entered an Epstein party doesn't mean that you did what uh, some folks did at Epstein parties, right? Um, and, and and from my understanding of the reporting, they usually didn't do it at the parties. They usually did it behind closed doors at other times. So I'm sure a lot of women went to Epstein parties that had nothing to do with what Epstein had done. Uh, we know that Trump went to Epstein parties. We know Clinton went to Epstein parties. So um, so it doesn't mean that they're all guilty. Um, and so I don't just say that because they get touchy about it. I say it because it's really true. I'm sure a lot of people went right. to those parties that had nothing to do with uh, the crazy stuff that happened. But Ken, you know, it's interesting. I, off air, somebody was telling me about these high society sex parties that I thought were kind of a fiction. I thought they were, you know, eyes wide shut kind of nonsense. Is that real? I couldn't believe that it was real. It turns out, no, it's real. There's definitely, uh, apparently, Sex parties specifically for the rich, uh, and then you, when you see Epstein in that context, you begin to realize, oh, that's a niche within high society sex parties. Is oh, do you like young underage girls? Oh, you should go to Epstein, right? And so, on the one hand, we have the pizza guys who are nuts and who think that Tom Hanks controls the world along with Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci and it created coronavirus so they could be child molesters or whatever insane thing that they think, right? On the other hand, it turns out there was this group of elites that molested kids. So what's your sense here? And I know it's such a broad question, but like, and it's so hard to tell, but how big was it? Like, I mean, Epstein winds up dead in the most curious way imaginable. I mean, that's a hell of a thing for the video cameras on that hallway not to work. So how big do we think this thing is? Well, I know a lot of folks in law enforcement um, and specific to his death, you know, we have, and you've reported on this too, Jenk, we have, we have conditions in prisons that are unbelie- unimaginable. Um, you know, that being said, it's hard to imagine that someone like Epstein is not gonna get, you know, some sort of special uh, treatment if only for the fact that the warden doesn't wanna get in trouble, which ended up happening. I think the prison warden ended up getting fired after um, this they see a very you know uh, sort of VIP type figure come come in here, but the conditions are very bad in prisons. I don't think it's you know I don't think it's um, you know implausible that that you may have been able to kill himself and 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 you know just the uh, kind of procedural checks weren't in place to keep an eye on him because these you know these prisons are a disaster. Um, that being said, um, you're 100 percent right that um, in the reports that I mentioned before and. Uh, there are plenty of other reports now because thank God for the uh, Me Too movement, kind of shedding a light on these things that had happened quietly, but that ordinary people, uh, you know, who aren't going to uh, billionaire ga- uh, galas or fundraisers and things, um, might might not know about. But what what you find is they there's a tendency uh, to tolerate in your presence uh, people that you probably really shouldn't, um, perhaps for expediency. I have, I you know if you ask me to guess, I would guess Musk is you know uh, doing what a lot of other billionaires do, uh, which is being an operator, going and, and getting the face time with the kinds of people that are going to keep your company afloat with credit and uh, things of that sort, and that uh, you know, I would speculate that um, you know there there are probably um, advantages to attending uh, these these sorts of parties. I'm not necessarily talking about sex parties, just the you know functions themselves. But I think it's great that there is this uh, blow up around this. You know, Musk is going to say, of course, you know, this is guilt by association. I'm not saying that he's guilty of any crime. I'm just saying that. Um, you know, if there was anything he was guilty of, it was uh, tolerating the risk and, and in fact, the you know factuality that that he was around some of these people. Um, and so now there's going to be a social cost to that, and I don't think that's such a bad thing. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So let's talk about Musk for a second. Uh, we do another show called Old School where we uh, goof around a lot more, and we ran a poll called Elon Musk, yes or no? Okay, that was a whole poll. 
Uh, and this was before uh, you and him uh, beefed on Twitter. Uh, and so you can go to tyt.com slash pulse to vote if you want. We'll put the link in the description box if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. But uh, Ken, um, putting aside this particular picture, and again, we'd have no idea if that means anything uh, or it means absolutely nothing. And I understand why he'd be upset about it. We get that he's terrible at memes and calling you Clip Einstein is like nothing but a compliment. It makes no sense. And he's a super strange dude. And and he thought and he another compliment he gave you was he thought it was like hundreds of bots that had attacked him when it was just your followers. Uh, so <laughs> congrats on having that many followers. But <laughs> but last thing here, and I know this one's too broad too, but what's the deal with Elon Musk? <laughs> yes or no? It was seriously like he's an enigma. He Tesla is creating electric cars, which is great for the environment. But then he says he's going to support Kanye West for president, and he says coronavirus is not that big a deal. Who is this guy? Well, he's a bit of a spiritual figure to many of his supporters. Um, you know, who am I heard from? And we're very outspoken, not just on Twitter, but you know, I got text messages, and voicemails from all sorts of people. I sort of realized that I'm not joking when I say this. He is sort of like a megachurch pastor for like Reddit atheists or something, like in the sense that um, he is offering to them. Something that's very real, a, a a sense that something is being done about the climate, uh, which I can understand why people would be you know afraid of that. That is very concerning. However, I don't see uh, you know, and it's great that you know businesses are going to provide you know consumer services that are you know more eco friendly. Um, but the problem with this is the same problem in my view with with a lot of uh, solutions to climate that are based on consumption, which is that they're more expensive. These cars cost what eighty thousand dollars. That is not a uh, practical a uh, you know option for the vast majority. Of Americans, um, so uh, you know that that critique of his uh, business uh, being you know being what it is. A lot of his supporters say, uh, and you know they expressed to me, and I'm sympathetic to this. They said, "Look, he's actually doing something about this climate stuff. Like, uh, shouldn't we be sympathetic to that?" And I would say I would be sympathetic to some form of collective action on the part of the you know government uh, who really has the um, sort of resources to address this on something. Uh, beyond the sort of, I think, microcosmic scale that a that a discrete business um, could, but again, he commands this cult of personality that I think is almost uh, concerning. Because um, you know, when you when you see him speak to get people uninitiated like us, we recognize this as very odd behavior to be, to put it kindly. Um, but I wonder if part of this is kind of what we were talking about before. Um, you know, extraordinarily rich people tend to be isolated from other people because you're spending so much time. Um, sort of maintaining and uh, trying to preserve your wealth, that you become cut off from uh, ordinary people, and then you start to go a little nuts. <laughs> and he's not the only billionaire that has these very eccentric, uh, you know, views on things, or uh, does, you know, has 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 weird meltdowns on on on, on Twitter. Uh, you know, this may just be ordinary people getting a glimpse into the life of how the ultra rich uh, live and being sort of shocked at how different it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh- on the other hand, I like eccentric, so my jury's still out. Um, uh, so, by the way, apparently so is the Arthur's audience, because 70% voted no, but 30% voted yes on Elon Musk. So we'll see how the poll comes out after this latest dust up. But uh, Cliff Einstein, we appreciate you joining us on the Arthur's. Great to be with you, Jack. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.